Ever imagine being able to see the brain activity of a cyclist while he's exercising? Or to discover what happens in an athlete's body when the brain perceives fatigue? This type of research was impossible until a doctoral student, Eduardo Fontes, from the University of Campinas in Sao Paulo, Brazil, spent some weeks at the Medical Research Council UCT unit for the exercise science and sports medicine, and together with his team, built a mechanism that allows cyclists to exercise in an MRI scan. This is the first of its kind in the world by allowing the researchers to take an MRI scan of the cyclist completing a standard maximal oxygen consumption or VO2 max test. This test measures the maximum amount of oxygen that a person's body can transport during a bout of exercise where intensity is increased over time. The study is conducted by the Central Governor Research Group under the supervision of world-renowned UCT professor Tim Noakes, based at the Sports Science Institute of South Africa. Uh, this is the first time that we are measuring the brain during exercise. Nobody has never done before. It's, um, it, why? Because it's, uh, it's very difficult equipment to do that, and uh, the, main, the gold standard to do that is the MRI scanner. But the question is how to put someone inside of the scanner to do exercise. In an uh, aerobic, aerobic uh, um, situation, what is your brain activity? And when you're getting exhausted, what is lighting up and to tell you to stop? Um, because mainly we know that the brain is controlling uh, our, our acts and everything. So that's, we want to look at inside of the brain and see how it, the brain is active. This pioneering research is at its infancy stage, having tested seven participants first in a simulator and then in the MRI scan. Fontes and his father, a mechanical engineer in Brazil, had designed and developed a makeshift contraption that allowed the cyclist to lie flat on his back, head kept stock still in a helmet fixed to the bed of a scanner, while still pedaling furiously on a set of pedals connected to a cycling ergometer. The, the setup it's very uh, challenging, very challenging because what we did, we we want to, to put someone cycling inside of the MRI. So, but instead of, we cannot have any magnetic material inside of the MRI room. So what we came up with uh, like uh, aluminium and plastic and rubber and uh, and stainless steel materials with non-magnetic. So and then this cycling device, which is attached to the to the to the bed of MRI, it's transferred the torque to outside of the room, and then we have a proper bike outside, which is attached to an ergometer, which uh, transferred the load to the wheels. So when you cycle inside of MRI, you have the torque from uh, uh, with uh, according to the load from outside. So when and the, the cyclists inside, they have the, a screen which they have the feedback of how they're doing. So it's very, for them, it's very a new thing, a typical position and everything, but that's what we built here at Sports Science Institute. We built a simulator so they can be trained, so they were trained here, and then we could measure all the physiological variables, muscle, muscle activity, oxygen consumption, heart rate, all the, the um, measurements that normally you cannot come with our equipment inside of MRI room. So we first did the, exactly the same test outside. So we did a very traditional VO2 max test outside and, and also inside. And then we, we would put the data over and, and see. And then we can see how the physiological responses, the peripheral physiological responses are and compared to the brain activation. But the test has many constraints, one of which makes it hard to find cyclists willing and able to participate. The main hiccup is that in most sports activities, even the non-contact ones, the head bobs around too much. On the other hand, an MRI scan of the brain requires that a subject's head remains near motionless. So the, the challenge here is to make sure that the, the subjects even if he's pedaling, uh, still stands, uh, are, uh, are able to stand still, especially the head. The, the major concern with uh, the, the subjects is that uh, they are, they, they, uh, we, we must ensure that they are not claustrophobic. 
And uh, uh, another uh, uh, aspect is uh, the muscle. Because when you, wh when you exercise that really high uh, ventilation, you, you release a lot of water through uh, re respiration and, and the perspir perspiration. It happened with one of, uh, of the subjects, the machine uh, shut down. Cyclist Ian Mills went through an assimilated test where blood was taken every minute while his heart rate and muscles were monitored. In the MRI, none of these tests can be done because of the limitation of using metal objects to do these readings. I took the blood every minute doing the VO2 max test in the simulator, the fMRI simulator that we have in the Sports Science Institute to see the lactate, to try to find the lactate, lactate threshold and the increment in the, lact, in the blood lactate so we can find some relationship between aerobic and aerobic ex exercise and, and brain activity. Um, it's actually easier in there, I felt. I mean, the simulator with the mask on was way tougher, but just being in there, yes, I mean, no issues at all. I felt I got tired quicker, but I was trying to compete with the guy before me. <laughs> That's why they use guys. Um, I felt I got tired much quicker, and my legs were burning more. This is just the tip of the iceberg for the potential this VO2 max test has in future studies dealing with brain and sports performance. This is like a really first step, just really to describe how the brain is active. So we will have like a model and then after this we can create new, new studies, for example, to see if you, dip, if you have a depletion of glycogen and then what will be lighting up in your brain. So we can compare to the actual uh, study. If you become dehydrated, for example, what area in the brain. So it's really want to understand the mechanisms that some, something we kind of know already some, for most of the, the peripheral uh, responses, but we don't know how the brain is perceiving all that. And uh, also maybe uh, some people that, because there's some studies showing that the, when you do physical activity, you, have a, uh, you can increase your memory, you have a decrease the, the stroke possibilities. So, but why, you know? So we want to see how the, 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 the exercise can deal with this, what's the, the whole of the exercise on this. So we will have a closer mechanisms to that specific uh, explanation. The data has been collected and now back in Brazil, Fontes will study it and draw conclusions on findings that will be released later in the year.